I have taught Kubernetes to well over a thousand people at this point. And in this video, I'm going to share you the number one tool to get started with learning Kubernetes and running it locally on your machine. And the tool we're going to discuss is Rancher Desktop. Rancher Desktop is a tool by Suse, and I'm going to go through all of the reasons why I recommend this, but the main reason why I recommend this is that it runs everywhere and it just works. And the reason why you want a tool that runs everywhere and just works is because when you set the goal for yourself to start learning Kubernetes, then it's extremely important that you actually start learning Kubernetes instead of getting stuck with not getting your first cluster up and running. You can get very stuck in the weeds if you start with uh, running Kube ADM, for example, or if you don't have any Linux skills, then you are really in for a hard ride. If you're going straight into Kubernetes the hard way, you are not going to have a good time learning Kubernetes. The first, the, the, the most important thing when you start learning Kubernetes is that you have a place to run kubectl commands as soon as possible. You just need a kube API server to talk to, and you need to have that within minutes. And that's why it's so important to use a tool that just works within, without struggle. And because the, the, le the less struggle you have on, when you start learning something, the more fun it gets and the, the sooner you're going to get that level, that feeling of mastery and that feeling of, oh, I'm learning something instead of having to struggle through setting up your first cluster. So that's really important. So, because if you do that, then you get distracted from the real learning. In the beginning, you don't have to learn about Kube ADM, how to upgrade clusters, how to install it on Linux. The, what you need to learn in the beginning is to start running pods and deployments, etc. So, yes, I do recommend uh, Rancher Desktop, but I what I recommend above this is actually starting a Kubernetes home lab on bare metal. That's the best way to do it. To get a Raspberry Pi, get an old laptop or an old thin client, but to get a dedicated little machine that runs Kubernetes for you, and you can just do that with K3S, it's super simple. But that is the best way to do it. Second best to that is running it on your workstation or on your laptop. So in this case, uh, using Rancher Desktop. So. To install Rancher Desktop, it's super easy. You just download for Mac OS or for Windows or wherever you are. You install the binary, and then what you see is this very simple UI. Now, how did I arrive at this choice? Well, like I said, I've taught Kubernetes to well over a thousand people. And in my private DevOps community, I created a Kubernetes fundamentals course. Now, when I created this course, I put a ridiculous amount of research into which tool I was going to recommend to my students. Because, firstly, I needed something that would work for everybody, that would be easy to install, but also that wouldn't lead to much trouble. Because I don't want to spend my days uh, solving small problems on people's own machines, right? I want to help them with the bigger problems. So... I spent literally weeks researching this and probably more than anybody else on the planet on what tool it's best to recommend to students to get going. And well, this, this course teaches you the fundamentals of Kubernetes in a unique way. It's a practical way. It's like eight hours long. And instead of going into the theory too much, we actually start deploying applications within the first module. So it's a great course. I'm getting so much good feedback on this and people love this course. Supplement this with a uh, CKA course and you're good to go. So I highly recommend you check that out. But that's how I arrived at this tool through the deep research that I've done. So it works everywhere and I've tested this in that research. I run it on Linux, I run it on Windows, but most Importantly, it works on macOS, on Silicon Macs. And that is the big problem when you are 
learning Docker or Kubernetes or anything like that when you are running a Silicon Mac, which many people do, because the architecture is different and you can't just run normal containers, you are running ARM images. So you need something that can either translate that or, or run ARM images for you, or you need a different solution. And there are several solutions for this on macOS, and I tried everything. I tried running the Docker engine uh, natively and then using Kind, for example, Kubernetes in Docker. That didn't work out. Uh, I tried Docker Desktop, and although it works, it does require you to buy a license eventually, especially when you run it uh, for work. So I didn't like that part either. Then there is Minikube. I didn't have that on the list even. Minikube, I tried that as well. And although it works, I don't like the way that they have their own conventions on creating ingress resources. And it abstracts away a lot of the Kubernetes learning for you. And this is, uh, this is going to hamper you in your learning. So I advise against using Minikube. Then there's also Podman. Podman is also a viable option. However, like I've been using Rancher Desktop for two years and recently I, I tried, well, let's try, I, I saw a video about Podman and I thought, well, let's give it a try. And I can only speak to my experience from running on Silicon Macs. I mean, I daily drive Linux now. I hardly use my Mac anymore. There I just run it natively. But on my Silicon Mac, when I uninstalled Rancher Desktop and I installed Podman, it didn't work. I mean, I could run a couple of containers, but when I started doing some more advanced things, like run, wanting to run a Kubernetes cluster or running dev containers, most importantly, that's my main use case for running containers on my local machine now, it didn't work. I had to do all sorts of magic in order to get my dev containers running using DevPod, and even when I got it running, I was still running into problems because the underlying virtual machine that Podman creates has more limitations uh, with, through SE Linux than Rancher Desktop does. And because that's the whole point of these tools, what Rancher Desktop and, and Podman do is they, you, you have your laptop here, and then what they do is they create a virtual machine for you. And then on that virtual machine, you can create your containers and you can run your Kubernetes cluster with your pods in it. The, the containers are not actually running on your host OS like they would do on Linux. When you run Docker on Linux, then they just share the kernel. But here, you are actually running this in a virtual machine. So all that Rancher Desktop and Podman are are a fancy way to run a virtual machine with Docker in it. That's basically what they do. But Podman was a lot uh, more difficult um, also because the Docker command gets replaced with Podman or you should replace the Docker command with Podman. Uh, some of my underlying tooling did not work because they assume that Podman or the Docker command is used. So I had to write, write, rewrite scripts for that. And yeah, it, long story short, it didn't work out of the box for me on Silicon Mac, whereas Rancher Desktop does. So maybe in the future it will out, uh, out, um, com outperform Rancher Desktop, but for now, Rancher Desktop rules. It rules the world in terms of running containers and Kubernetes easily everywhere. So you install it with one click, and then the features that you get are super nice. So what I like about it is that there is no fluff. There is actually very little that you can do in this uh, UI here. There's very little that you can tinker with or mess around with. It's really straightforward. So let's check out what we have when we start it up. You have your general settings. Then you have your containers. So you have your overview of running containers on your current machine. And then you can stop them and you can manage them from here. You can delete them. Next, we have port forwarding. I'm going to uh, come back to this soon. But here, you, when you run a normal Docker container, then you can actually configure port forwarding right from this tool. Then you have your images. So you see all of the images that are cached on your machine, and they are all cached in your Rancher Desktop VM. 
So when you delete your Android desktop and your VM, then all of it is gone, which is great. You have snapshots. I have not used this myself, but I, I can imagine this is useful. And then you can check out the logs. And this is a very useful little button here, reset Kubernetes. So when you're tinkering and you mess something up and or you just want to have a fresh start, all you do is you click reset Kubernetes and you're, it, it just completely wipes it and spins up a fresh cluster for you and that's it. It's so easy. Diagnostics is pretty good. Uh, and then we have the extensions. I have not used any of these extensions, but uh, it's uh, handy to know that there are extensions for you to be um, trying out. And the preferences as well are very, very intuitive and easy. So you have to, uh, when running on Mac, I recommend using it on um, with administrative credentials, pseudo access. It has to do with networking. I actually did, I reinstalled it recently. I still have to enable it, but you, I sh I on Mac OS, you should. Um, you have your startup app uh, options, and then I have my path to be configured manually. So I have this in my Z shell RC file, but you can also set up automatic and then it will just add it to your bash RC or Z shell RC. You can configure which um, virtualization framework you want to use. I just use the normal QEMU. And then you can type, check uh, just the volumes, but also how much resources you want it to use. So I'm, I am a very heavy container user. I work exclusively on containers these days using dev containers. So I give it a fair amount of resources, about half that my PC has to offer, my Mac has to offer. You can check out which container engine you um, want to use. You can use ContainerD or DockerD, Mobi. You can even track, tinker with WebAssembly and you can allow image patterns. And then here you can, um, add, uh, you can select the Kubernetes version and the port of the API server but you can also just disable Kubernetes, which is very useful. Like you can just use Rancher Desktop as a replacement for Docker Desktop. And then you just use uh, that for your Docker and done. It's, it, works, it works perfectly that way. So you can just turn it off or turn it on and then you have your Kubernetes cluster. So when you have installed your Rancher Desktop and it's added to your path, and you do K get pods, then you should see your containers or your pods running on your on your freshly installed Kubernetes cluster. So you see that it is using the traffic ingress controller. You have your local path provisioner so you can create persistent volumes and you have your service LB traffic pod here, which is a helper pod that allows you to provision load balancer services. So all this so basically what Rancher Desktop has done is create a virtual machine for you where it runs K3S. And K3S is also something that you could install on, for example, a Raspberry Pi, which is what I do in my Kubernetes Home Lab course. Uh, this is a 10-hour course where you will learn how to set up a Kubernetes Home Lab from scratch. I'm using a Raspberry Pi that costs $50 to start the Home Lab just to prove the point. But we go through setting up the the complete home lab using GitOps, and uh, like there is a one and a half hours on just GitOps alone and the theory and the application, practical application for it. And then we're going to deploy an application and then expose it to the internet safely without having to expose your actual router to the internet through tunnels. So it's a complete masterclass on building a Kubernetes home lab and creating applications that you can access from your phone, even when it's just running here at home in your closet. So it's a great, great resource. I've been getting so much positive feedback on it. I think you might like it. And in there, we also use K3S to install that. And the great thing about K3S is that it has the service LB functionality, because if you are running Kubernetes on-prem, on bare metal, then if you create a load balancer, then there's no way for it to assign an external IP. So in the cloud, when you have managed Kubernetes, when you create a load balancer service, then the cloud controller manager will create a cloud load balancer for you so that your Kubernetes cluster 
is reachable from the internet on an external IP address. But on bare metal, it doesn't work, and then your load balancer just gets stuck in pending. And if this is not your first rodeo with trying with running Kubernetes, then you have definitely um, been in that situation. But Service LB fixes that, so that's great. So let's check out how we can uh, then test that out. So here we have our, I just wrote a very simple deployment with our, of course, our favorite image, Nginx. We are exposing the container port 80, and then we are adding a service of the type load balancer that runs on port 3000, but then forwards it to port 80 on the Nginx deployment. So if I apply this file to my cluster, then here I see that my uh, Nginx deployment is now creating, but what we also see is that there is now a SVC LB Nginx service pod running. So that's very interesting. So this is done by the service LB traffic controller, and this actually deploys a helper pod which makes your service available to the to, to get an external IP. So if I do k get SVC, then I have my external IP here and a port that is now forwarding to my Nginx deployment. So if I do localhost 3000, then here we go, here we see my Nginx. Now, if I had my, administ ad my admin privileges on, then I could also add this external IP, but the way this works on macOS is that it only works that way with uh, when you have your admin privileges on, which unfortunately I don't, but you do have the local host, and then when I go into my Rancher desktop UI here, then if I check out port forwarding here, we see my Nginx service. So it is already forwarded because I'm exposing it to an external IP, but I could also forward it from here by just clicking the forward here, and then now I have a port that is forwarded. And then I can just enter this into my browser and then this is now routed through. This is now routed through Rancher Desktop as well, so it gives you a, it gives you all you need to start learning Kubernetes, very easily to get up and running within a few minutes, and that's the most important thing when you start learning Kubernetes. In short, Rancher Desktop is the number one tool to run, to install when you need Docker, a container runtime and Kubernetes on your local machine if you want to start learning Kubernetes. Take my word for it, I've taught thousands of students, and if you want to learn more from me about Kubernetes, DevOps, and ask me questions directly, jump in my Kubecraft community and learn from the experts, not just from me, but from uh, nearly 500 industry experts that are all ready to help you. Hope to see you there, and see you in the next one.